the series, I'm building a tiny cabin off-grid in the woods. Episode 3 Where it all began What does this place spark in your imagination? What do you think of when you look at this tiny cabin? It's taken me a year since last winter when I first discovered this place. Hi! Welcome! If you're new here, my name is Flossie and this is Siren Step Van, my tiny home on wheels. I built this van conversion myself and this series begins our adventures of converting this rundown, rodent infested, sketchy kids' playhouse into the most dreamy of all off-grid tiny house cabins. It is off-grid, out of cell phone reception, there's no electricity, no, no anything. Blown away by so far is how the community has just come and even for such a small channel, y'all are supporting me and showing up as much as I feel like I can share with you and encourage you and that is, makes it all worth it. You are asking why did I remove the floor? Well the walls were built on top of the floor. We had to get rid of the asbestos. The floor here is just uh, bent, it is curved, but I want to insulate underneath it and I'm not crawling underneath so we're gonna start from the bottom and work up. If you put more on top of the existing floor, you lose headroom. After that recap, that brings us to where we are today. Continuing to work on the floor, insulation, and an exciting piece of demolition. Am I gonna need to replace this whole beam? This is one of the floor joists, so it's a pretty big deal. Of all the things to discover, rot was not one of the things I'd bargained for. Hello and welcome everybody. Welcome back to the tiny house. As you can see, we have lost the front wall. This is a very big deal. We're gonna be moving this front wall out. So, over the next little while, I have a few other jobs to get organized, to get ready to start rebuilding. There's things that like this and this that have to come down, but we're getting there. So thank you all so much for watching my previous video. Your kind comments and your advice and your encouragement really means a lot. The last one was a whole lot of work. Uh, it really did me in in a little ways, both mentally and physically. So this week I am determined to get a lot of progress done and to keep my spirits up by looking after my mental health and spacing the work out and doing fun bits and difficult bits. We've got to take out this piece of wood, but actually really, we're taking out the whole floor up to this post. So this is all gonna come out. That's gonna come out. That's gonna come out. Potentially this beam, but I'm gonna get some advice from somebody who's more engineeringly minded. Um, and then the last tiny piece is taking out this little strip along the edge. If I can get all of that stuff done, we'll be in a really good place to lay the insulation in the floor. That's a really big deal. If I can get the insulation into the floor, then we can start putting the floorboards back down again and the rebuild can happen. And that's the exciting part. I want to give a big shout out to the Blue Eddy EB3A also. It has been the powerhouse of doing this uh, demolition for the tiny cabin. Um, it's life changing. I don't have power down here. There is no cell service. There is no electricity. I'm hoping to get my solar panel out, but now that it's coming into fall and winter, there really isn't that much sun. So I can take this up to my van, charge it up there with my big solar panels, and then continue working down here. Such a difference.
raining and I'm covered in sawdust. Battery is now at 35%. It was at 70% when I started and I've done one whole edge and chopped along this front beam so that I can go get my trusty sledgehammer and crowbar and bang the shit out of it. <sighs> oh, my hands are vibrating. I can feel like my nerves all like because of the vibration of the tool. Ooh. Right, definitely time to get a new tool, a different tool and do a different type of work. We're gonna try and remove this up to this line here, all the way across. And then we've got these other pieces in front, but they should be easier to take off once this piece is here. Ha! <laughs>
all of the old floor now is officially removed except for that small piece here I'm very very stoked some immediate work that I need to do is support this beam this is very dangerous that one also only has a tiny square and that one there needs some more reinforcement however one thing I've just noticed that I'm concerned about is this beam here I'm was wondering the state and soundness of all of the beams as I was demolishing and removing the floor that was on top of them this is not sealed to the elements I know it leaks and this one I think is a bit rotten like that's not good do I have rot am I gonna need to replace this whole beam this is one of the floor joists so it's a pretty big deal I think from looking at it that this is the only affected piece just this top bit here which should be easy to either cut out support or reinforce I think in here looks okay it's splintering instead of crumbling but again i'll need to do a little bit more check and get somebody else's eyes on it yeah that seems to be pretty dry but this is dry rot obviously at some point it's gotten really wet and then sat like that this beam see the difference my hammer on it and it's just just making dents whereas here it was like eating it away and turning it to powder this is not good This looks like a wood beetle. That's not good at all. <sighs> if that's woodworm, then I'm gonna have to figure out what else to do about it. I'm pretty sure these are the only places affected. I will check elsewhere. Everywhere else when I bang the hammer on it it doesn't disintegrate this place and this place these two spots have really disintegrated when I touch it so <laughs> not ideal of all the things to discover rot was not one of the things I'd bargained for so I will check a couple of the other beams make sure that one there is not also rot or if it's just me and bashing things around in my demolition <sighs> the next jobs are to take this down and this down because we've got to rebuild a wall in this space with some window openings however I'm pretty sure it's time for me to do some more of my dreaded favorite task of rodent proofing I feel like I'm in a never-ending uh, negotiation with furry four-legged critters who like to come in and stay in my warm spaces. So time to tackle this one and put in some more wire mesh.
morning everybody. This morning I am going to use some of my leftover pumpkin stuff and make pumpkin soup. So the first step is to light the fire. So let's do that. Now I'm going to cut up these pieces of pumpkin to boil them, cook them, so that we don't waste it. And this will be the, for the flour for the bread that I'm going to make this afternoon too. Bread has risen nicely. I am going to add some more flour, knead it, add a little butter, and then set it to rise again, but I'm going to put it in the Dutch oven this time so that after this it'll be in the container it is going to bake in. Also, my potato pumpkin, sorry, has boiled. I've got one more pot left because it doesn't all fit in the pots that fit on the fireplace. So that's doing, and then we'll be able to add some stock, some seasoning, and blend it. Mm. Needs salt. So yummy. I put some butter in it. Mmm. 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 Yum. this episode and are looking forward to seeing more of the build rebuild construction progress I'm so excited that to start this series and have you follow along and continue 
this is going to be an amazing space when it's finished. I plan to build it like a work of art, like an art project. I think when I bought built Siren, my step van, it was built out of necessity, built in a time frame because I needed to live in it and I had a time frame to get to living in it. So this space feels like I have the luxury of being a bit more of a perfectionist. Huge thank you to my Patreons who have been hearing about this project for a while and cheering me on and supporting me. Okay, I'll see you all next week in the next video. Bye!